right. Oh boy. This is gonna be different. Yeah, man. Well, here we Dad? go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome guys for the first time ever right here. We're going to be introducing something a new, a little different, a new show. This is going to be Tales from the Blind Side. So I brought my brothers together, man, Jamal Jackson, the center, the, the quarterback of the offensive line, and then my mighty wing man, Todd Harriman is here. We're going to be able to get together and be able to just pull some together, man, just really just give you the game from, you know, just from Tales, man, so from, from, from offensive linemen that understand the game that's been in it and guys that I've gone to war with. So, man, I'm really excited to bring us all together, man. Jamal, man, how's everything doing, man? How's everything going with you? Man, life is good. Life is good. You know, just around here trying to shed a couple pounds. Hopefully I can help the, help the boys out if they need, like, a guard or a tight end or something. Yeah, man, I see you get out there getting the grind in, man, getting your workouts in, man. It's trimming down. Yeah, but it ain't doing nothing for the grades, though. So, you know, y'all got to keep just that. like, that's wisdom, that's you know what I'm saying? Thing. Wisdom just keeps coming, you 100%, know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm getting like little, little bits in here, Jack. They're coming in, bro. <laughs> yeah. it's, just part of, it's part of experience, I would say, right? Exactly, man. TH, man, how's everything been going with you, man? Everything's been good, man. Just uh, enjoying life, you know, uh, trying to stay busy. Uh, that's about it, though, you know. Uh, I see Jack over there. Losing all the weight I seem to be finding from him. So uh, we're, we're good with that. You know? nah, I nah, just nah, pick nah. it up right off of the floor for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm picking it up too, man. I mean, yeah. it's, the, the struggle is real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, man, let's just go ahead and just get on into this, man. You know, we're going to sit up here and just talk about what's going on with this team, man. Right now, they're starting out 0 and 2. You know, so since this is our first time really getting together, let's go back to the Washington game and just kind of go back over that and just talk about what you saw from that game, man. You know, for you to go in, you know, I think, I think going into that game, a lot of fans, a lot of people felt like, you know, this was going to be a team that you've already played several times, you know, with the Washington football team now, no longer the Redskins, but a team that you just felt like, you know what, we've already started the season off with them a couple times and was able to come out of there with wins. And then now you go in there to a different atmosphere, no preseason games, uh, training camp was totally different, and you go down there and you get smacked. What did you guys see from this? Uh, I think first and foremost, I thought that they kind of took those guys for granted, you know, like from last year with the rookie quarterback that the Washington football team had, you know, you figured with no offseason, like they couldn't possibly get any better. But, you know, they show otherwise. And, you know, that defensive um, front that Washington, you know, has, they, they pose a challenge no matter who they're going up against. You don't need an offseason to go see ball, get ball. So that really ugly head and, you know, the lack of chemistry and the continuity along the line, it kind of like it was pivotal that game. And that's what led to all, the, all those sacks they gave up. Yeah, yeah man, I really, go ahead, I really feel like I, I really feel like this just, game just showed how how important, as much as we don't want to say it, the, the preseason and, and all that time together really is. <laughs> um, you don't get all that all that orchestration and everybody on the same page. Then you know, most teams are kind of on the same level because everybody's got athletes, everybody's got players, but it's really that time that you put in, like you know, being cohesive, uh, knowing what each other's going to do and stuff like that during during the training camp and, and the grueling times. And, and they didn't really get into that this year. And you're just all going out there and just seeing who has the best athletes. And and it's, ex, it's exposing some things. Yeah, man, because I, I think a lot of players, you know, a lot of people have been talking about, hey, man, we don't need the preseason as much. You know, let's cut <laughs> I, those I games. I like that. Yeah. Said, Fuck the preseason. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so now – you go in there, you don't have any preseason, and you go out there and get your ass kicked because you haven't worked on the, all the, worked all those kinks out. Your conditioning is down because there were multiple reports 
coming back where guys felt like they were gassed because you haven't played any games. And that's why I feel those preseason games are extremely important, man, just to even get your conditioning up. Man, that yeah. and that and coupled with the fact that, you know, you coming into the season with, I want to say, three-fourths of your offensive line injured, you know, you got – a 38-year-old right guard transitioning back over the left tackle like three days before the game. Like, buddy been playing right guard all camp or when he signed. And then all of a sudden he walks into the office and I'm going to be the savior. You know what I'm saying? Let me, right. let me go ahead and, and take this left tackle spot, you know, which is fine. But, you know, it showed during the game that, man, those reps and that practice time on the field uh, is very pivotal because you can't just – roll out of bed, and get, get a double-double. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Football no, ain't like yeah. that. Oh. But you're also seeing a bunch of injuries happening, too, throughout the league. Just guys, star players that are getting injured. I think Saquon just got hurt this last weekend, and that's mm -hmm. going to happen, I feel like, because you're just don't, not used to the, the intense impacts through the training camp and building up to this. You know what I mean? So I, I hope it's not a trend that we're going to see to continue, but – you know, I think that's what I think that's why some of these key injuries are happening. Yeah, there's no ramp up phase. You just go from all right from practice because there is no way balls to the wall, Woo! balls to the wall. You there's <laughs> no way that you can go from they're saying all right, we're gonna practice to all right, let's go out there and go full speed without those preseason games. And I think that also hurt this offensive line because you didn't have an opportunity to see what you're gonna be going up against. You know, you didn't see what Chase Young. Yeah, you can go back and look at some of his college film. But you don't really know what Chase Young is going to present to you, man, and then what these other defensive fronts are going to give you, man. So I think that that had a lot to do with it. And then you go back and you say, all right, you know what, just on the offensive side of the ball, man, we've all gone out there and had our ass handed to us, man, and, you know, and given up several sacks. But just from guys that I go in and battle with, man, how do you think it felt, man, just in that meeting room to know that you went in there and gave up eight sacks, 15 quarterback hits? Well, I mean, um... Circa 2000 and you know exactly how they feel. You know exactly. We know exactly how it feels. We know exactly. Because how I many we gave up 10? We gave up 12. We gave up 12. Well, I'm gonna say, I ain't gonna say we. I'm gonna say me and Todd was a part of that because you checked out on us. I didn't check out. I played that. Oh, you talking about the New York game. Yeah, yeah. I didn't check out that game. I did not check out that you game. My knee out. was injured. I had to go to Alabama oh, to go get man. my knee checked out. That was, that was Winston Justice time. out there. That, that, that just showed time. that, you know what, that island is not friendly, man. It's, it was a tough hey, game. Hey, and, but, but like, like, like the same thing kind of, kind of, kind of happened um, in a sense. Like when back in 07, when, yeah, Donovan was coming off the knee injury, you know what I'm saying? You, you was banged up and we went out there with like a rookie right tackle who, you know, shit was coming at him too fast and he couldn't process it. And I think what happened was that following week, we played the Jets. And then we tighten up everything as far as protection-wise. We leaving two and three backs in, both the tight ends in. You know, we ain't trying to give up no sacks. And I think the same thing happened with this Eagles team this past week when they played um, the Rams. They got stuck on the, let's just focus on Aaron Donald. Let's mm -hmm. tighten up this um, – the, 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 this protection, we want to keep the quarterback clean. And what they do was, you know, you leave the back open out in the flat here and there. No real big shots downfield because they was conscious of what happened last week. We did the same thing in, um, in 07. Wow. Give them 12 sacks and then come back and try to button it all up, but have like, um, I want to say marginal explosive plays. You know, everything was 10 yards or, or, or lower, you know. So, and that's, and that's what they fell, fell victim of this past week. Yeah. Now, how do you think that playing right now, because now you go to, you're still down here, they're still down in Washington, you have no fans in the stadiums. How do you think that plays into it right now, especially when you're playing, like, especially from the defensive side of the ball? For the offense, we know we're just out there operating. But on the I defensive mean, side of the ball, when you need that energy in the stadium to feed off of, how do you think that's going to affect the players? Bro, I think that that affects them huge. Like, remember practicing in the stadium when it was, like, nobody even in there? It felt weird. Like, it just mm -hmm. felt – it felt fucking weird. Like, you weren't even supposed to be in there. And, like, mm -hmm. that's how the games feel right now. So, like, as an offense, it felt weird for us. But like you said, bro, you're out there. You're just a machine. You know what you're supposed to do. Defense is so – 
emotional and yeah. and the highs and the lows and the just the the wave that you got to ride with the crowd and getting the crowd into it because when you're playing home that's your that's your team the crowd is so like mm -hmm. not having that there and just I can't imagine having defense be so unemotional and be just like calculated and just reads I mean communication's probably great you know? yeah yeah <laughs> but, of course <laughs> but, but I don't know man it's got to be weird as shit how did this happen, though? Did they really pipe booing into the stadium? Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. Like, Absolutely. Like the fans, wasn't that a home? Weren't we home? Yeah, yeah, we were home. But, you know, for the for the Rams game, we were home. But, but yeah, right. they definitely pipe, they pipe booze in for the Rams game. Who yeah. Did, yeah. Who's in home, charge home. of that? They, like, <laughs> they wanted to keep it real. Like a, they got to take, like, a live poll online to see if, like, we should boo in the, in the, in the crowd. <laughs> oh, no. They said, okay, you throw an interception. Boo. Hey. Oh, hey, when they I'm wondering that. who's pulling the trigger on that. Who's pulling hey. the trigger on that? I don't who's know. Pulling? We need to find that man. Who is <laughs> who is get pushing the, the boo gate. button? <laughs> we we got to get down button. to the bottom of boo gate, bro. Boo gate. Yeah, but, but, but see, that's another, that, that's yeah. another um, effect towards like the fans being there and not being there. It could be negative and positive because – Hell, the defense get a turnover, they cheering. Offense go down the score, they cheering even more. So now we hype. We like, fuck it, get us the ball back. Let's right. go out and score some more points. But the fans ain't there. You know, you get a turnover, you drive, and you you, you drive like you bought the score a touchdown. And it's like, damn, like you you try to find like that extra energy, that extra lift to get you, you know what I'm saying, to uh, through goal line. But yeah, buddy at the control center was like, hey man, fuck it. I'm one of these fans. Boo your ass. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> them three and outs. Them yeah, three and outs. Them, <laughs> yo, them three and outs got to feel so goddamn lonely right now. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Man, they got to feel so lonely. Them three and outs, man. You come back off the sideline and sit. There's nobody behind you. <laughs> no, nothing. There's nobody back there yelling at you. It's just you and the coaches just in your face, and there's no – man, that's got to be – tough just as players to even just go through that experience. And what I find is that on the defensive side of the ball, you don't have anybody that's going to create that spark. Just from what I see, you know, when you go back and you watch these games, who's your leader on that defense? Who's going to be the guy that makes a big play and gets everybody riled up? Because you, since you don't have fans in the stadium, you got to come with your own juice. You got yeah, to create that own create juice. And I don't see anybody back in on our teams you had Trot, you had Dalt, you had Bullet Wound, Hugh Douglas, guys that are going to make a play, and it's something that they're going to create their own energy. I don't see that same type of personalities on this on this field. Yeah, I think um, it's it's kind of gotten to the point where um, I think Doug is too much of a player's coach because, man, you see it right now, man. He gives these guys, like, way too much leeway, man. Like, days off? What, what, what does that even mean? Like, as an offensive lineman, uh, you need that continuity. You need that chemistry. And as a lineman, you got to get those hits in during camp. And with the camp being as limited as it was, the offseason, the preseason, the mini camps, the post-draft mini camps, like, you don't even know what your rookies look like. You're just throwing them out there in the fire and expecting, you know what I'm saying, good results. And that's not how it works, man. Like, he's, he's, too, he's, too, he's too lenient with these guys. Hey, bro, it's a different landscape now. The more guaranteed money that you see, the more and more days me. off you're going to see. The more and more days off you're going to see. That's just wild. That, that was so foreign to me to see that injury report come out. After you just got drugged by Washington and you see two guys have a rest day, you know, after week one, just absolutely ridiculous. And then, you know, then you say, okay, you know what? Okay, I'm, all right, maybe, all right, they needed a day off. Well, I need them to show up against the Rams. And it just wasn't the same. Yeah, I mean, to that thought about the rest day, back to the not having a training camp, your body's not battle tested yet. There was no ramp up to it. Maybe they feel like this is a way that they can kind of create a ramp up back up to second week without like blowing them, banging them, wearing their bodies down too much, you know? I mean, it seems insane to me, but you know, yeah. Different times. These are different yeah. times. Yeah, it's definitely times, different times, times, man. Definitely different times. So tell me, when you see – when we come up and we're, we're going back to Washington, man, we're 17-0. You know, you're feeling like, all right, we got things going. I mean, Carson went down there. He drove down the field, put points up on the board right out of the first half. What the hell happened? Huh. Like, I, I hear a lot of, like, back and forth and people saying, well – 
Carson is trying to do too much. Um, mm-hmm. He's trying to win it all on one play. Well, <clears throat> what it actually looks like is he's reverting back to the last, the last, uh, I want to say last quarter of the season last year when he had to be Superman. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? When he had to carry the team. Now it's like he's trying to do too much, but he has playmakers and he's not trying to use it as at, at his disposal. Like, I mean, you see guys wide open, inaccurate. He got guys mm-hmm. running in the flats wide open. Like, it's just poor decisions. And I think all of that is a testament to not having a, a proper offseason. You got to remember, this guy came from Division Two. Like, that's not, like, with the big boys and D1 and all that stuff. Like, like Yo, you relax. I mean, I you relax. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. But we need that. We need to get that work in, man. Like, we, you know, I, I feel as though a guy like hey, him with the amount you of injuries. two players work hard. Yeah, man. I mean, with the injuries that he had, man, I think he's just forcing it. And, yeah, that Washington game, the line didn't help him at all. Like, Bro, you know, no. any game or the past game. Tell you. It, was, it was awful. What it looked like to me, it just looked like – it really looks like a conditioning thing. You know, everything goes when you're tired. And as the mm-hmm. game went on, like, everything just started breaking down, poor decisions, bad protection, bad reads. You know what I mean? And I think that that just I, – I hate to keep harping on it, but, you know, training camp's important, man. Like, that's yeah. that's all that stuff happens. You you get in football shape playing football, and you can't get in football shape for, in, in two weeks. You know what I mean? Like, you need all them reps and stuff. And I think that's what you're seeing. And, and I think ball's going to just look sloppy and, and until, like, you know, we get into, like, the second quarter of the season or something like that. Huh. Well, you know what, man? If they, man, okay, I, I don't know if they can stick with If they keep losing like this, I, you know, you <laughs> might not get them to the second half of the season. But, you know, just one of the things that I wanted to go back to when you talk about training camp, when you're talking about practice, a lot of people really don't get it. They're like, well, man, he's making too many bad decisions. Why isn't he seeing this? Why isn't he seeing that? Like you were saying, he's leaving receivers wide open or guys open down in the field. People don't really understand that coaches script the practice for the quarterbacks to be successful. Yes. So they always, you see coaches come out of that field like, you know what? Hey, man, we had an excellent practice. Not one ball hit the ground. Well, that was because you had the quarterback only going to his first two reads. You never took those <laughs> reads away and it made him see the field. How much do you think that has a lot to play? How much do you think that plays into Carson Wentz's game right now with him not seeing the field? Um, I don't know if it, if it affects him not seeing the field. I do know, like, you know, from a um, – from a uh, center standpoint, you know, how we would go over, like, the blitz protections or whatever, and, like, it, like you said, it's, script, it's scripted for a reason. So when you go out there on the field, that's supposed to be, like, the same look or something similar to what you're going to get on Sundays. And I thought showing us that look beforehand and going over it, like, in the classroom and then running those same plays on the field so we could see it in live action against our defense, I thought that was, like, helpful as hell to me because once we saw it in the game, there wasn't no hesitation. Oh, we keep the slide on, we basing it. Now it's like, I think what Carson is doing, and a lot of people have said this, he has so much freedom to change the plays and do what he wants, you know? Mm-hmm. So he can go up to the line of scrimmage, kill, kill, check, check, or whatever the calls that, that they make, and it goes from Doug script to his script. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I don't really know who to, who to place the blame to. I know that he hasn't been on script that as far as running what Doug has been calling and for the most part, hell, if he sees something that he wants to attack, he's going to go for it. And nine times out of ten, this season, it's been a bad decision. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think another thing is that training camp isn't just for players. Training camp in the preseason is for calling plays, calling defenses, seeing what audibles are going to work, you know, seeing what protections are going to work, seeing what your athletes can do versus the athletes you had the year before because it's different every year. It's a different landscape in the NFL. And that's, you know, it just didn't get to get weeded out this year like it always has. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, got guy, you got guys making a team that you didn't really get a, a good look at. You know, you can't really judge guys off of practice because some guys practice horrible. And then some guys show up when the lights turn on. So that was kind of a tricky little transaction that, that went on, <laughs> like, when, when they came down to cut date. I'm like, how you cutting these guys based off of practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Right. Yeah, and that's all you could have to go off of just because, I mean, that, that this is where we are right now. But I just yeah. felt like the better teams that you, when you have more veterans, guys that are going to take that preparation time a little bit more serious, guys that are challenging each other in practice other than just allowing those other players to win, those are the teams that's going to be a little bit more successful. That's just from what, from what I see because, you know, you go back and you look at what, what some, a lot of the reports that came out of training camp was just how – well, our receivers were out there just doing our secondary. You know, for a second, it seemed like Slay was going to be another Namdi Asamoah just because of how the secondary was just out there running through these guys. But then that just shows you how once they got the game time, no, you know what I'm saying? They went out there and started challenging the receivers. That spacing wasn't there. The timing wasn't there. And now you have all of these turnovers that's being created because now you're actually getting challenged like it's game time. Man, shit. I think defensively, the one bright spot is the guy they gave all the money to. Man, that dude Slay, he can play, man. Yeah, that he first, can play. That first game against um the the receiver that, that that Washington has, he's supposed to be pretty good. Second year kid, man, hold him like two catches, eighteen yards. Then this past week, another two catches, what? 20 yards. So they getting their money's worth from him. It's yeah. just, that D line, man, and those linebackers, they scare me because yeah. Man, the, the D-line, you know what they're capable of. But now they're getting a little long in the tooth. But those linebackers, they're young and experienced. They're small. Like, I don't see who on defense that's going to make that turnover play, that that we need the ball back play, you know, and we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, everybody – before, even when this defense was struggling, there was no team that was going to come in and, and rush over 100 yards on our defense. But now, I mean, you go back and you look at – where they held the uh, Washington under 80-some yards, under under 100 yards. But then the Rams – I mean, the Rams just had their way with them. Man, you ain't got to – you don't have to – you don't have to rush for more than 100 yards if you're starting to drive on the 40 every time. Exactly. <laughs> you can't rush for 100. So, I mean, the offense really fucked that whole game up for the defense. <laughs> and, like, when I look at it, like, in, in like, a, like, you know, in a vacuum, you say the offense jumped out 17 nothing. the defense was was rallying with the offense. But then when the offense went to shit, the defense went to, went, went to shit. So it's like yeah. – and they go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why true. I think it comes back to like conditioning. Everybody's just getting tired, and then you know how it is. You jump off sides when you're tired. You just make mistakes. Oh, you yeah. forget the game plan. You, you know. I think that that's that's where they're at right now. Yeah, man. That, yeah, that Washington Washington game just showed a lot, man. So then we move on to the Rams, and then you know you know <laughs> what the Rams bring to the table. You know that Sean McVay is going to going to come out here and scheme you to death. And that's exactly what he did with just coming out there, running the ball and coming with some play action. And just, I mean, you know, it, it, when you have golf come out there and he's 13 for 13, you know, what can you do to stop that? Oof. I mean, a turnover would be nice. (laughs) 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 But you didn't even have anybody close enough to make a stop. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that was all – man, that first half was horrible. Like, you just saw positive play after positive play. I don't think they punted in the first half. Yeah, I don't think so. No, because there was only one three and out. There was only one three and out in that game. And I think they punted, what, twice the whole game? Yeah, twice. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, yeah, you, you can't, you know, and that, that was a situation where I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the coordinators because these guys were so out of position that the closest guy to the ball carrier was like four yards away every time. And the mm-hmm. holes were, man, now we can, we can walk through them holes how, how big they were, man. And, yeah. you know, with the whole play fakes and all that, the defensive ends, they was just so undisciplined. Everybody getting sucked in. Like, why? Like, early on in the game, they ran the ball a little bit. They didn't make it, like, their focal point. Their focal point was play pass unless just throw it over the top of the linebacker's head. That's what they was doing the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Swartz, he said something um, early in the week about, yeah, I think I made the scheme a little bit too complex for the players. And I'm just like. No, he said he made it too simple. Oh, too simple. Oh. Yeah. He made it simple and they still fucked up that bad? Yeah, he yeah, said man, he, we got we to do some reevaluating, man. Like they they they, they, need, look, they need like another mother training camp because uh uh-uh, it don't get no vanilla than that. Like he didn't yeah. blitz nobody. 
Nobody. They never blitz. <laughs> oh, man. They never blitz. Yeah. They didn't send anybody. You bring Jalen Mills up to the line. You try to play him like Malcolm Jenkins a little bit, but that didn't work. You know, yeah, so they were undisciplined goblin, with bro. their gaps. Huh? The great. The Green, the green Goblin. Goblin. Man, yeah, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Different number, different position, same results. Come on, man. Come on, dude. That's the Green Goblin, dude. He was bringing I mean, swag. He said swag. Wow. Swag was out of control. But see, here, but see here's, the, here's the thing about these new cats, man. Like, <laughs> it pains me to see it. Like, don't, don't get up flexing when this motherfucker just caught an eight yard out on you. But he did flex, though. And he got up and he did, you know what I'm saying? Like, when he did, hey, he did there's probably there's probably a great picture taken that he's gonna be able to put on his Instagram or use just an avatar or something. Yeah, yeah, probably made, a great picture right there. No, you made the tackle, yeah, great. But damn, he still got the first down. Yeah. Like, what are we celebrating? It's and, about the digital media, the digital yeah. media, Jack. And, and, and that's why I say, man, like, man, Doug, he he let he let these guys show their personality too much. Like, damn, dog, that's a negative. Yeah, 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 you did not win on this one. You, there, there was no need to jump up the place. That was considered an L. You know what I mean? And I understand. <laughs> I, and I understand it's a new position for uh, for the young fella, but he's always been like that, man. Oh, yeah. Like that. That just it, it just pains me to see it. And like, damn, dog. Like when you make a play, yeah, flex all you want. But damn, he caught the ball in front of you. The chain's moving. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys, glass, glass half full. Glass half full, guys. The offensive line, not so bad. Yeah, not so they bad. came to play. Not, not no. so bad. They came to play. When you go back and you come off of that eight, eight sacks, 15 quarterback hits, then you answer the call because you got Aaron Donald coming to town. For whatever reason, over the past couple games that they played against Aaron, they have shut him down. Oh, so, here was, yeah, here was another performance where they came out there and they held it down, and they didn't always slide to him. Going into this game, I thought that they were going to slide to him a lot. They just yeah, tried I did too. Mix. I thought they were going to double him all day long. Yeah, yeah but that's not yeah. what they did. Sometimes you let Isaac go ahead and be man up on him. You let Nate have him a couple times. So I think they did a really good job of everybody just answering the call. You can see that Kelsey came out there, was playing with a lot more energy. I felt like JP came out there. He sat down on some bull rushes really well. Uh, Lane Johnson coming off of ankle surgery, first game back. I think he came out there and did a really good job. So I think the offensive line just as a whole did an excellent job. Even Matt Pryor stepping in at left guard, there was really no drop off. I mean, they did a good job, I think, as, with the, as a unit. I mean, I think that's their their anchor, old Lane Johnson. When he plays, they seem to kind of like button everything up, you know. But like, yo, that's oh, like he, such a they have a crazy record when Lane plays. When he plays, right? right? When yeah, he like, plays, over, it's like, over the years he don't play shit. Boy, the quarterback is on the fire, and nine times out of ten they're gonna lose. They lost the last game as well, but. You know, uh, it looked better though. It, it, looked it, better. It, it looked better. It was a prettier yeah. loss, I guess, on the offensive side. <laughs> From us, yeah. yeah. From yeah, the offensive line is you, it was a prettier loss because, I mean, they went out hey. and they nailed it down, man. You rushed, you rushed for 120 some yards. You had 120 yards rushing, you know, no sacks, only three quarterback hits. That's a good day at the office as an offensive line. Oh, no. This will be the only, this will be the only Friday meeting from a loss that the offensive line get a game ball. Like, they didn't touch the dude. Yeah. Like, Did you get balls now on a loss? Huh? I hope not. For a loss now? No, they don't, they, don't, they don't give game balls for a loss. But I'm just saying, it'll be the first time in history because, man, like man a, this, dude, this dude got like 73 tackle, 73 sacks in 74 games. Wow. Like, yes, that's all. And, and to not get the Carson after he, he was hit, what, 14 times the week before and sacked eight? Yeah. Man, that was pretty impressive, man. I got to get a big, the big fellas up front, you know what I'm saying, some kudos. Um... That first, that first drive, I was a little skeptical because Aaron Donald was over Sam Malu and he pushed his ass down to the goalpost. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he yeah, just yeah. rubbed the pass a little bit. But... He got up there, chest was high a little bit. Oh, you know, man. Yeah, he, I, I, I don't know what he was thinking. Hands hey. were wide. Hey, boy, that, boy was, that boy was catching. Yeah, that I bet that. You can't do that. <laughs> I've yeah, been there but, one too many times. Yeah. yeah so he got out there and he was in, because a lot of people don't understand. To me, I like and I like Isaac game. I thought I felt like he was starting to come around a lot better, but he's a center playing guard. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and to me, I feel like he gets a little too balanced in his stance, like a center would. So uh -huh. he gets a little wide, which could cause some problems when you're talking about yeah. that bull rush. 
Yeah, I mean, I, but they they fare pretty well. Even the young guys. I mean, um, from the Washington game, it was a it was a, it was a, a fucking shit show. Everybody played bad, no matter who they had in there. This past week, I really do think, you know, Stoutland and the boys made an emphasis on not giving up pressure, like keeping the pocket clean, and that can be a good thing and a bad thing because now everybody's turned on the fucking quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So like, 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 look, you had nothing but time. It's your fault. Right, right, right. 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 <laughs> and, you know, and then it doesn't make it any easier for Carson because now you dress Jalen Hurts coming off of one of your probably or one of your worst performances, and then now you got the second your second draft second draft choice uh, dressing in this game. How much pressure you think you're gonna put on this man by putting having him dressed for this game? And you know now you know you just got over the whole Nick Foles controversy. Yeah. <laughs> and now you got Hurts coming in, Bro. and you play another shitty game. I think there's something more to it. I think he might not be feeling 100. percent Yeah, you think it's really? a little health issue? I don't know. Well, why would you dress him? Are you really gonna bench Carson Wentz or bring or, or dress Jalen with the possibility of having him play? Unless you're no. going to do some, like, two quarterback sets or something or use him as an athlete or something like that. You know what I no. mean? Like, why would you dress him? Yeah, yeah they, play, they had him as a decoy. Now, I thought that – I think that the reason they dress him is because now you're coming off of an eight-sack, 15-quarterback hit game, and you you say, you know what, you're going up against Aaron Donald and company. What if Carson doesn't make it out of this game? We might need to give ourselves a chance, get us another athlete out there that could possibly dance around just in case an offensive line doesn't answer the call. Yeah, yeah I mean, but you know, you take you take eight sacks in a game, you, you could easily have fallen on a shoulder or have a yeah. bruised rib or something like that that easily goes under the radar for, for a week or so. So yeah. you know, I'm not saying that I've heard anything like that, but it just seems like a possibility. You take an eight sack game, them are some hits. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was one time when Matt, um, I always mess this man's name up, man. Matt. Ianitis or like the always, dude from Temple. Matt yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt from Temple. Yeah, yeah. Temple Pride Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt from Temple. <laughs> I always mess his name up. Like, it's Matt Ianitis. I, like, I always want to say Leonidas from 300, but for whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, but it's, it's something like that. But Matt from Temple, he put a lick on Carson one time. You can see Carson get up kind of like, ah, that one hurt a little bit. So, oh, man. you know. You know, I don't know, it, you know, I can't, I don't want to say that it's an injury, but maybe there's some soreness there or whatever, because they the one time that Carson did scramble, you know, it didn't look like the Carson of old. Yeah, well, everybody keeps saying that, like, he's an athletic quarterback, you know, like, <laughs> no, 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 it, it, it's, it's just the, it's just the definition of that. When you hear somebody say an athletic quarterback, you're thinking of Cam Newton, Deshaun Watson, um, Russell Bro, Wilson, think, yeah. you know, things like that, like, like people that they don't, they don't run, you know, they're not running quarterbacks, but they run to gain yards. Like, like what Russell Wilson does, he's not a running quarterback, but he's yeah. an athlete. He can get out of trouble or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Bro. Like ever since like Carson had the back injury, the knee injury, the rib injury, I mean, damn dog, that athletic ability starts to wane a little bit. And mm -hmm. over the years, I mean, you've seen him, he's, he's getting chased down by D linemen. You know, it's just I just think with him, he just needs to be smarter about getting rid of the ball and throwing it away. Like he's trying to make every play. Yeah, and that, yeah, that, 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 I, that doesn't work. Yeah, isn't an athletic uh, ability really uh, about the measurables that you do at the combine? Like you train to be fast, you train to jump high, and they're like, holy shit, look at this guy's vertical. He's an athlete, look right? at his 40. <laughs> he's a freaking athlete and he's a quarterback, right? right. <laughs> Dude, I mean, he's not running any 40s anymore. He's not jumping. Oh. He's not jumping any, any, he's not doing an L drill or three cone or shuttle or anything like that. And he's getting beat on. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? So, like, you know, his 40 times probably slipping a little bit. And I would imagine he probably can't jump as high as he used to, you know. And, and those numbers come down. You got to start to transition. And you got to – you better be accurate. You better be a goddamn good decision maker. You better learn the offense in and out. And you better be able to carry people out there like a leader. You got to have those other intangibles take over when that body starts to go out. You got to have something else to lean on. Yeah. Exactly. Because then when you go back and you say you got to throw away the ball, <clears throat> you have that time where he was down in the red zone – and he ended up throwing the ball away twice. So, you know, yeah, we, yay, we can celebrate that he threw away the ball instead of taking a sack. But there were two times where he missed wide open receivers. 
and chose because he's back there moving around. Ah, what's going on, going on? He missed three receivers that were over to the right, and then he threw the ball away on the first play. And then on the second play that he threw the ball away, he had uh, Miles Sanders streaking up the sideline. And if he would have just thrown it to the um, thrown it to the first yard marker, he would have been it would have been a touchdown. But I mean, you know, he's back there scrambling around, moving around, and then like I don't want to take a sack, I don't want to take a sack, just throw the ball away. You know, I don't know what's going on. with him. He's probably yeah. a little gun shy after last week, after the week before. He's probably a little gun shy, you know, and. They had to prove their his confidence in them again after that week, so he didn't get he didn't get touched. So maybe this week he will be a little settled down, a little more calm, not have such happy feet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no. I mean that, that and, and that's where you know you lack the uh, the preparation in the off season and training camp and all that. Like they like from the reports, his mechanics are off, like his footwork or whatever. The whole happy feet and drifting back while the rush is coming to you and trying to throw it off one leg, that's all training camp. Like, yeah. if you don't get that adequate time, you know, of practicing those situations, you know, it's going to rear his ugly head. In the it's game. called that oh shit footwork. The oh shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but I do, but I do believe that he can write the ship because mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've seen what he can do and I've saw, I saw him in practice before. I mean, the guy looks the part. Yeah. I mean, shit, 6'5", almost 6'6", 240. You got a yeah. cannon for an arm. It's just you got to be accurate and you got to make um, sound and safe decisions. And, shit, get, get this thing turned around. I, I believe he can do it. Now, I, I do believe now he needs to put his receivers in a safer position, man. I mean, he got Rager head taken out twice, you know. And I'm like, look, man, you <laughs> know, you want these young cats to trust that you're going, you're not leading them into harm's way. And I mean, he sent Rager on in there like, hey, man, go get it. And that safety was sitting there and just went head on and dove right into his chest. And then yeah. you get down on the red zone, and then you have a chance to score. And then he sent Rager in there again on a linebacker. And I mean, the linebacker just climbed right on into his chest. It ended up being a penalty. They scored on that drive. But again, man, I mean, you got guys in there taking those hits. You know, you're going to have receivers not trusting you, man. They need to feel that you're going to protect them because they want to focus on the route, focus on the ball. They want to make sure that you're not going to lead them into danger. And then you had another time where you had Zach Ertz come across the middle and he threw that ball to Zach. Zach was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he shot on that, dude. He's like, hey, boy. Hey, I ain't playing with no lacerated spleen this year. But but it's funny you you should say that because I was reading a quote the day that he said from his interview and he was like, Yeah, man, I still have faith in this team and have faith that we can turn it around and I, and I trust this team. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, some of those passes do the team trust you. Right. Do That's the team question. They trust you because Oh, I know what you're talking about, T. I uh, saw that. He even the, the the pick that he threw in the end zone to Ortega Whiteside. It was so late that he had to get his clock clean. The dude took his head off. Yeah. The ball. So yeah. And then the one with Ernest crossed the middle, man. The one he got him. And then another one, he was like, man, I ain't reaching for that one. No, I mean, he just yeah. had my head taken off last week. You, yeah. You, you can't keep leading you guys in the harm's way like that. And. Hey man, I'm with those receivers, man. My arms are turning to spaghetti as well. Yeah. <laughs> and keep laying me up there now. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Now with that guaranteed money they got now, they're starting to give out. I wouldn't be reaching out for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but but man, I, I, like like I said, man, it's, it's just the um, the off season, the lack of off season, and I think this was like his first off season that he didn't have to rehab anything. Mm-hmm. So if you take that into the account where, damn, he's not rehabbing, but he's not at the facility. He's not yeah. practicing with the guys. They're not uh, working on their techniques. You won't have these slip-ups from now until uh, probably, hopefully, before uh, October. Because, you know, once November come around, you know what kind of team you are or what, time, what kind of team you're going to be. Well, man, let's move on to the Bengals then. When you're talking about going into, uh, you know, trying to get to October, you know, you got you got Burrow in the – he ain't playing. Oh, he's playing now. You know, now. You, know oh, like, you got Cincy coming to town, man. You know, Joe Burrow ain't playing and he's hungry, man. You got a young player that has some confidence, a team that's, that's, that's just as desperate as you, that's 0-2. But you got a quarterback, man, that seems like, you know, he's like, look, man, we're we trying to get something. Man, they put up 30 points last week, man. So – 
Yeah, we, have, we haven't gone over 20 points yet. Yeesh. You yeah. know, so, you know, you, you know, when you're saying that we're trying to make, make it to October, if we mess around and go 0-3, how do you think they're going to try to keep this team together? Yeah. Oh. Band-Aid? <laughs> it's gonna, it's, oh. Bro, it's going to be on the players inside. It's yeah. going to be tough, man, because you know the finger point is going to come out real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, if not, you know what? Let me go back to this round game real quick because this this was an interesting little quote, man. Rodney right McLeod came out and he was like, "Yeah, man, you know what? We weren't surprised by anything that the Rams gave us. We practiced all of it." What? What? What seems yeah. to be the problem, then, sir? I was, yeah. If 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 you weren't surprised, I was surprised with that response and the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> so do we need like better athletes? <laughs> I don't know. I, to me, if they would have asked me that question, I would have lied. I'd been like, you know what, man? We, they came out with something that I didn't even know. <laughs> I, didn't know. Man, I, I didn't never see, see that. that before. Yeah, man, when, it, when they saw painting lines on the field, I didn't know that was going to be there. You know, <laughs> you know there's no way I'm going to come out my mouth and say, hey, man, you know what, though? Yeah, I, I knew that that was going to happen. Yeah, we, we, were, we were playing. We, we were we were all playing for that. We knew that was coming. There is no way that I was going to say something like that, but he did. You mean yeah, like yeah. you mean like, hey, did you know the game could end in a tie? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, that that can happen. Yes. <laughs> I mean, all while I'm like, yo, let's hurry the fuck up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This moment <laughs> taking this time. Like we got two fucking halves to go. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. Oh man. Nah, oh nah, nah. man. Good old but, yeah. good, good times, good times. <laughs> yeah. But man, they need to get this win, man. You know, I hope that this team pulls it together, man. And uh man, this was real, man. I really enjoyed, man, getting my brothers on with me, man. Uh tales from the blind side, man. We're gonna <laughs> keep this thing going every week, you know, and uh we appreciate everybody that's out there that's tuning in to us, man. Hey, let's keep this thing going. Hopefully we can talk about a W next week. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. All right, cool, man. Well, hey, man, y'all take care, man. Y'all be safe. Stay safe out there, man. I'll talk to y'all, man. Appreciate it. All right, All right Trey. Thanks, bro. Yeah, man. Later, Jack. Yeah. All right, now, talk. Yeah. You turn this fucking thing off. <laughs> there you go, man. All right, dude.